desperate for you. No matter what the trouble, no matter what the trial, I'm lost without you. you can do it on your own. Put your hand in the hand of the I'm master. desperate for you. desperate you don't care what your neighbor thinks about your worship tonight Jesus I cry out to you I'm desperate for you God Jesus 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 just to Just to Yeah. 
just to know you just to do desire this evening praise God and if that's your desire where is that desire with all of your other desires that you have praise God is that our main desire today to be close to the Lord to be in the arms of the Lord to behold his face to be in the beauty of his holiness is that your desire tonight praise God well if it is that's God's desire as well praise God. And when his desire meets our desire, then my friend, you've got an intimate relationship with the Lord God himself. And that's what he desires more than anything. He died for us so that we can have that relationship with him. He wanted to prove to us so much that his love was enough love that would not only bring him to us, but also us to him. Praise God. We could never come to him totally on our own. Praise God. And so he made a way Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I desire to be with the Lord. Praise God. He's a wonderful, wonderful Savior. And that's why we're here tonight. Praise God. To give him honor, to give him glory, to give him our appreciation for all that he has done for us and all that he is still doing and all that he is yet to do. Oh, my friend, God has so many things on his heart for us, each and every one of us. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. I would trade this for nothing in the world. There would, even, there would not even be anything to even consider to trade this in. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Thank you, Lord, for giving us these opportunities that we have to love you, oh, Lord. It's so good to be in your presence, oh, God. It's so good. Oh, Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Brother Jared, if you got a song, go ahead, brother. Praise God. Let's enjoy the presence of the Lord here. Hallelujah. Yes. Here in his glory, your mountains seem to fill. Yes. Yes. Here is where yes. you find the strength yes. to go. So don't lose home, you're in to see just beyond those doors. So enter in. 
into the presence of the Lord. Enter in. Oh, enter in. Enter in. Yes. Into the presence of the Lord. Enter in. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Where your answers are in store. Healing waters flow, enter in to the presence of the Lord. Here in His glory, your mountains seem to fail. Here is where you find the strength. You can enter in to the presence of the Lord. Praise God. This is where the healing waters flow. This is where salvation flows. This is where our help comes from. Praise God. Enter into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can come into the presence of God any day, all day, all night, any situation, no matter where. When, how, you can come into the presence of the Lord. Praise God. That's where we're healed. That's where we're strengthened. That's where the power is. The presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have just some, some prayer requests that we want to take before the Lord, before the parish preaches. You may be seated. Uh, we have uh, someone who was diagnosed with cancer here not too long ago and we have been praying for them uh, I believe it's Melissa Bingham is that correct Birmingham okay and uh, we want to remember, remember them and uh that God would take care of them. And also they have some spiritual needs as well. Um, also.
Also, Donna, who we prayed for a little earlier, um, that needs, uh, they're going through a battle, and they need a touch in their body and in their soul. God's able to do that. Praise God. Also, um, the bowling family, let's remember them, okay? Uh, Brother Bowling has, uh, uh, there's some cancerous situations that's there, and he needs a touch from the Lord, and, uh, um, and God's able to do that. I'm sure that there's a lot of fear there. I'm sure there's all kind of emotions that's there. And so when we pray, we're praying not only for the healing of the body, but we're also praying that God would strengthen his faith and, and help him. Praise God. Because, you know, it's times like this that many times we ask for, for our healing, but yet sometimes we have those things so that it will bring us closer to the Lord. There's, sometimes there's other circumstances that are surrounding it that we don't see. And so when we pray, we just ask that God would not only take care of the physical need that we might see, but also for all of the other underlying situations that might be there. And only God knows what they are. And that's, that's why we bring them before the Lord. Praise God. Yes, sis. Yes. Okay, so we have an uncle who has had a mini stroke, and then also for Jocelyn, uh, that God would help her, okay? Uh, God's able to do that. I know our bodies, you know, no matter how young we are or how old we are, uh, our bodies uh, comes against some physical uh, attacks sometimes, and uh, we need God's help, especially during those times, because not only does it become a, a physical thing, but sometimes it affects us even emotionally and psychologically. And we need God's help. And he's able to do that for us. Praise God. Brother Feliciano. God. What was his name again? Forrest, okay? Forrest. If we can remember Forrest this evening, okay? Praise God. Yes, sis. He's perfect. You know, we, when we pray, we pray, you know, with, with the understanding of that, that we have. Um, but, you know, when we do that, God, he knows the whole situation. He knows every side of the circumstance. He knows all the people who are involved. Uh, many a times, people are involved that are not directly involved. And God is aware of that. And he's on top of that situation. You know, and so when we pray, I'm telling you, when we pray to God for these needs, man, we, we're praying more than what we even understand, really, really, because you're talking to a God who knows everything. He knows the whole circumstance, all the feelings, the emotions, everything, the financial end of things, he, all of that. So when you're praying to the Lord about these needs, my friend, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It goes way beyond our understanding. It really does. Oh, that's why we ought to pray, my friend. Every opportunity we get, we need to pray. We need to pray. Prayer does more than what we ever, ever 
can really even imagine. Praise God. Yes. Okay. What's her name? Christy? Okay. Can we remember Christy? Okay. You can, I mean, all we can do is just imagine how much pain that would cause. Okay. To lose your child. And did you say the only child? Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't think that needs very much explanation, okay? But again, God is aware of all the circumstances that are surrounding that. And my friend, oh, my friend, God is able to do more than we can even think or even ask. So can we just believe the Lord for that tonight? Praise God. Oh, praise God. Sister Della. Okay, let's remember her, okay? That's not the most exciting test to go for, okay? Uh, but just know that God is able to help her, okay? She's going in there for these tests, and folks, you know how it is, even just to take a spelling test, okay? You know, some of us, that's enough to fast for about three months, you know, okay? But to have to go in, you know, for tests that are, as we know, is very serious, uh, uh, you know, it brings fear to our hearts. And hard to sleep sometimes, depending on how it affects us. Oh, my friend, God cares. God cares, and he's able to help. He's able to help. Let's pray that God will go with her when she goes to take her test. Praise God, okay? And, you know, the doctors may find something. That, that happens, okay? But you know what? That's not the end of the world, <laughs> okay? Right, Brother Jeff? Where's my Brother Jeff at? Where's he at? Yeah, there he is. Hallelujah. Oh, and Brother Jeff, I was watching you up here, man, worshiping the Lord, brother. Man, God bless you, man. Seriously, keep on doing that. Keep on doing that. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We serve a wonderful God, man. And he's going to take care of us. Yes, we have needs. That's not going to go away, okay? We're going to have needs. Yes, we ask God to take care of his needs, and he does. But, my friend, we live in a world where tomorrow we're going to have more needs. But that's okay. The, the needs isn't really what the problem is. I'll tell you what we need more than anything, and that's faith. Lord, just give me faith and give me strength to get through my everyday situations. And my friend, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Yes, we ask him to take care of our needs, and we're going to do that from now to the time he comes. Oh, Lord. But what we need more than all of those things is faith. Give me faith, Lord, to stand for you in the midst of my troubles. Okay? And God's going to do it. Yes, sis. Yes. That's right. Praise God. How many are going to love the Lord tonight? How many are going to believe the Lord? Let's stand and let's go before the Lord. I know there was a lot of needs here. And you know what? Every one of them are very serious. But we're taking this, these serious problems to a serious God, to a real God. A prayer answering God, and that's what we're going to do right now. We have some that are still looking for jobs. God is able to take care of those needs as well. Praise God. Let's talk to our God. Oh, Lord, we love you this evening, oh, God. Oh, Lord, you know you are so important to us, oh, God. You are so important to us. Lord, you are needed in our lives. We cannot live without you, oh, Lord. Lord, you have heard all of these needs, oh, God. Lord, you know the seriousness of every one of them, O oh God. Many of them, Lord, are for people who are not even here tonight, O oh Lord. But, O oh Lord, we ask because, Lord, we know that you are so aware, O oh God, of every one of these people, Lord, and their needs, O oh God. You know how these, uh, these circumstances affect us, O oh God. You know how it affects our emotions, O oh Lord, and how it affects those around us, O oh Lord. O oh God, you know the fear, O oh Lord, that comes to our hearts, O oh Lord. And, oh, God, with all of these things, we're able to cast them upon you, oh, Lord. You've even encouraged us to do so, oh, God. And that's what we're doing as a church right now, oh, God, that has been bought with your blood, oh, Lord. Oh, God, we are lifting these up to you tonight, oh, Lord. And we are laying them, oh, Lord, at your feet, oh, God, because we know that you're able, oh, God. Oh, Lord, you have heard these needs, oh, God. Some of them, oh, Lord, are for things that are yet to come, oh, Lord. Some of them for tests, oh, Lord, that are going to be coming up, 
Oh, Lord, would you go with each of these, oh, Lord, as they go to the doctor's office? Lord, we know that you're able, oh, Lord, to take away whatever the concern is. But even if you don't take it away, oh, Lord, we ask, oh, Lord, that you would give us the strength, oh, God, to bear, oh, Lord, and to get through, oh, Lord. Uh, oh, Lord, help us to be victorious, oh, Lord, according to your desires in our life, oh, Lord. Help us, oh, Lord. Oh, God, there are some, Lord, that have lost their little ones, oh, God. In one case, oh, Lord, the lady, Lord, has lost her only child. Oh, Lord, only you, oh, God, can understand the loss, oh, God. Oh, God, but you are the prince of peace, oh, God. You're able to bring peace, oh, God, to that circumstance. God, I don't know how you do it, and Lord, frankly, Lord, I just leave it in your hands because I know that you're able, oh, Lord, to bring peace and hope, oh, Lord, to this mother, Lord, who has lost her little one. Oh, God, would you do that, Lord? Oh, God, we're praising you already for it, oh, Lord, because we know that you're able, oh, God. And, Lord, when we hear the news, oh, God, of what you have done in that life, oh, Lord, uh, we will offer you more praise and honor and glory, oh, God, uh, because you are worthy of it, oh, God. Lord, there are some, oh, Lord, that are going through depression, oh, Lord. The pain of the heart and pain of the mind, oh, Lord. Oh, God, you are able to take care of that, oh, Lord. For those stripes, oh, God. Uh, oh, God, for those stripes that you've taken, oh, Lord, we are able to be healed, oh, Lord. Uh, whether it's in body, soul, or mind, oh, God. Uh, oh, Lord, would you do it tonight, Lord? We believe you, Jesus, and we trust you, oh, God. Uh, Lord, we do believe you, but, Lord, help our unbelief, oh, God. Uh, help our, oh, God, our weaknesses, oh, Lord. Uh, strengthen us, oh, God. Uh, Oh, Lord, help us, oh, God, that our faith, oh, Lord, would be strengthened in you, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, bless your people, Lord. You know every need that's here, oh, God. Uh, we're trusting you tonight, oh, God. Oh, Lord, and we're thanking you for all the things you've already done. Uh, Lord, you have done so many things, oh, God. So much so, Lord, that it just, it just helps us, oh, Lord, to continue to trust you, Lord. Uh, our strength, oh, God, is strengthened because of you, oh, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. Bless us, O oh Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Bless this church, O oh God. Let your will be done, O oh God. Oh, we love you. In your wonderful and holy and precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise as our pastor comes? God bless you. Let's turn to the book of Romans tonight, chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And I'd like to read a few verses at the end of the chapter. Verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Praise God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we look to you for comfort. We look to you for forgiveness, Lord. We look to you for so many things, Lord. The list would go on. But you're coming soon, Lord. Many of the needs that we have will fade when you come, Lord, because you're finally bringing to us what we've been waiting a long time for and the completion of what you started in us, Lord. You gave us the earnest part of it already, Lord. We're just waiting for the payment. Help us, Lord, tonight to appreciate 
what time it is, Lord. For I'm sure that what was written many years ago now, even more so, we're nearer. It's high time. Our salvation is upon us, at the door even. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And knowing the time, amen, that our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Let's turn to Romans 8 so we understand what he's talking about, our salvation being nearer. We are saved now, but we are yet. Talks about a yet salvation that's coming. All right? Romans 8 and... uh, I'd like to start at uh, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. That's what we're waiting on. That's the salvation that's nearer than when we first believed. That's coming. That's upon us. That was... So near that the writer said, it's high time to awake. Amen. Read on. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we wait with patience for it. Amen. And we're waiting for that day. Praise God. And you can read on down a little bit. fills in a little bit more of it but that's not the only scripture that mentions it it'll go ahead and turn to Philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking for him. Amen. He's not going to take us by surprise because we're looking for him. The ones he takes by surprise are those that are not looking for him. I want to be looking for him. I want to be living as though he's, coming at any time and it's high time it's it's past that I mean he could come while I'm preaching he could come in the next word I say if he wanted to amen and we need to live that way the earnest expectation the hope the glorious hope amen to wit the redemption of our body, and we're finally full blown, full blossom sons of God. I mean, we have a body like His glorious body. It says, For our conversation is in heaven, 
For whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall do what? Change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Now he can do that. Colossians chapter 3. For you're dead, verse 3 says, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. I'm waiting for that. We're waiting for that. When he appears, we're going to appear with him. It's going to be that quick. All of a sudden, he's there, and we're with him. You'll probably, you just, it'll happen so fast. Uh, well, I can't explain how fast. In one place it says, in the twinkling of an eye. It's, that's a, the quickest time period that anybody's measured, probably. Amen. The, that twinkle of an eye. Not even the blink, a twinkle. You ever see it when they cross a light beam or something? It, it flashes at you, you know, out of their eye? That quick. And it's high time. All right. First John chapter three. First John three. Amen. Verse two. Beloved, now are are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And it says, every man that hath this, what? Hope. It means we don't have it yet. But hope. The seen is not hoping anymore. But we're hoping. Amen. Our hope is very strong in the fact that he's he's about to come every generation since this was written has lived with that anticipation and rightfully so amen none of them are have been false in their, in their delivery of that message that's the way the Lord give it to it amen nobody knows the hour but I, I know that it's coming and it's imminent, especially this period we call the rapture. That's what we're talking about. The second coming, when he comes back at Armageddon, lots of signs that precede that one. i got to see the Antichrist set up his throne and be revealed. A lot of things have to come to pass for that time to come. But Jesus is coming in the rapture at any time. At any time, you need to be counted worthy to escape what's going to follow, which is that second coming that's not a pretty sight. Amen. It's high time, he said, knowing that that's what's about to take place. Our salvation is now nearer than when we first believed. And for some of you, that could have been 50 years ago. I'm getting there wife's already been there not that I'm putting age on her she started quicker than I did amen so the next month uh, on Wednesday night uh, that's when I got saved in 1969 amen that's how I remember it was the last Wednesday night but it I would get the Holy Ghost sometime after midnight, so it's really on Thursday that I'm becoming a child of God and being baptized. It's high time. It could have been already. Amen. <laughs> but it hasn't. He hasn't come yet. So how eminent is it if 
this amount of time has gone by, and he said it was upon them then. The writer says it's high time. And Paul's the writer of Romans, which most people accept. Amen. He's he is telling us that it was high time then, two thousand years ago. What is it now? Split second, <laughs> any minute, any second. You could be driving home. You could be wherever. It's time. Knowing the time, and we do know. I mean, I, I'm making you aware that we're hoping for something that hasn't come yet. If it did, we, it wouldn't be hope anymore. It would be the real thing. We'd have been there. But since we're still hoping, it's coming. And that day is upon us, and salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Amen. We're one step away. From being the mortal being, an eternal being. Amen. We're going to get a body that will never die. Amen. That will wear forever. Amen. It will never wear out. It will never grow tired. Amen. We're one step away. Eternity is at the door, so to speak. The night's far spent. He said, the night is far spent. If it was far spent then, where is it now? I, 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 it gets me. I, I, I can just feel the, the air starting to move because I don't think we're going to have to wait much longer. And we're going to be a part of something that we've been longing for for a long time. This is no time to be, you know, asleep. We need to be awake. We need to be looking for it even more so. If they that said they went about looking up all the time. That was a testimony that some people wrote. That they went they were constantly looking up in the air to see his coming. We don't do that anymore. What happened? We don't even we're we're already planning into 19 this and then 2000 that and then on and on. We, we, we got it all planned. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with planning, but when we start just going along thinking we've got 50 years to go, you know, and this and that, and we don't think the Lord's going to come, well, we just get lax about what we think, get lax about what we, uh, we accomplish. Amen. We're not allow we we won't allow ourselves to be used like we need to be. We don't have much time to light up this world for somebody else. If we're gonna do something for somebody else, better do it now. If we want to reach the world, we better do it now. Amen. If we, if we fall asleep at this time, what a hurt that's gonna be. The night's far spent. The Bible said the day is at hand. Amen. Awake. Wake up. That, that, that implies that the writer being directed by God knows that we're asleep. He's saying, wake up. Many, you know, the, had somebody yell at him when you were, wake up! And you fly up out of bed and, didn't it? It says, awake out of your sleep. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 6, therefore let us not, what? Sleep, as do who? Others, but let us, and for they that sleep, sleep in the, and they that are drunken or in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober. Amen. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. 
and for him and the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath. Amen. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So there it is again about this imminent coming of the Lord. Amen. Awake. Amen. Mark 13, 36 says, Last coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Sleeping. Amen. Could you be asleep? How many ever fell asleep while you were driving? Uh, not good. I did it once. That was enough to scare me to never do it again. I've caught myself once or twice. Especially if you try to drive all night like you were. And I was in that service and I wanted to get home. And you drive from anywhere. <laughs> Just to get home. You want to get home. But the worst time of the, for me was as the sun come up in the morning and it shone in the windshield of your car as you're driving. And um, it just puts you right back to sleep, if you were. I mean, you catch yourself. I did it at night, too. That's a bad time, too. You're really tired. I mean, the sun beating in your face, you, you can fall asleep doing that. But you can fall asleep when it's dark, too. Amen. It's probably easier to fall asleep. You got the radio turned up full blast. You got the windows all four down, you know, if you don't have air conditioning. Most of us didn't have air conditioning. Amen. And you can be going along and just next thing you know, you're, you're going. You're out. Amen. And I that already. I was coming down 222 from the turnpike. Amen. I'm going along. And doo -doo 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 -doo. Boy, I'm almost home, you know. Next thing I know, I... I woke up with the car bouncing and banging and crashing. I was off the road in the grass, headed for whatever. I didn't know. I, I was glad I got stopped before I hit anything. Amen. It's time to wake out of the sleep. Amen. Because it says, let's coming suddenly, he finds you asleep. Amen. We don't have much time to sleep. It's time to awaken. And we can live sleepily. That means we don't, you know, uh, go around and you, you just... Uh, you don't want to do nothing. Just put your feet up on the... Thank you, Lord. Good night. We ain't giving it our best. And he's coming. Something isn't right, is it? You know what? The fact is, is we don't believe he's coming. We don't believe he's coming. I'm just, I'm just, you've heard me say it so many times. You say, ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. He said that last week and it didn't come. <laughs> why, why should I believe him now? I heard him 30 years ago. Why should I believe him now? He, he said it about 2,000 years ago. Why should you believe it now? Because it's coming. We don't have time to live sloppily for the Lord right now. We need to live it to the hilt. Whatever it takes, we ought to say, God, help me to do everything I know to make this the best day of my life and for other people's lives that are lost without God. Amen. What should we do? It says, because the day's far spent, I mean, the night's far spent, and the day's upon us, it's at hand, when well, we're not to sleep, and we're, because he could come suddenly, he said, awake out of the sleep. Amen. And do something. That is, he said, cast off something. Amen. We have work to do. We have work to accomplish. And that is, we got to cast off the works of darkness. 
Amen. And he mentions a few things too. Amen. Ephesians 5.11 calls them the unfruitful works of darkness. And he names a lot of them. I won't go there. Amen. He, he puts some right here in Romans. He said, cast off works of darkness. It's, it's the kind of things you do, you know, in the shady, questionable things. You, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing. Amen. Works of darkness. We usually try to hide when we're doing something that we know isn't quite right. Amen. And he, and he mentions them, too. We think darkness can uh, somehow conceal us so that we don't get caught. We take chances. I mean, have taken chances and got caught. You almost have a heart attack. Somebody walks in on you. Somebody catches you. Doing what you didn't want them to find out. It says, well, it's time to cast off those kind of things. Amen. That means to cease from doing it. Desist. Abhor. Detest. Amen. You have nothing more to do with it anymore that's what we should be doing finding things we don't want to we don't want we don't want to have any of those charged to our account at this time because he's coming he's about to come can I say it any you know I, I, I might sound like a broken record but I'm going to keep doing it because I need it for myself Amen. This is no time to be doing less. It's time to be doing more about casting off the things that are, you know, shady. Works of darkness. Amen. Rioting, drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, strife, envy. He mentions them. Amen. He warns us. Luke 21. Luke 21, verses 34. And take heed to yourselves. Amen. That means look, look carefully. Don't look at somebody else. Just check yourself out. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time. Now, what time? Any time. Your hearts be overcharged with and that word surfeiting is banqueting or, no, partying. Amen. Just in the last, what, 15 years, they, they, they call them just that, party animals. The people that party all the time, right? that their life is just filled with one party after another. Amen. They, they don't enjoy anything else. They live to party. Amen. Well, the Lord's going to come. Overcharged with it. Drunkenness. That, involve, that gets involved in it, too. Amen. It isn't long until you have some alcoholic beverage that's going to, you know, take you for a loop. And cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you how? Unawares. Amen. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the earth. Amen. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to what? Escape it. All these things that shall come to pass. Amen. I don't want to be in, I don't want to, I don't want to go through the tribulation period. I don't, I don't want to have nothing to do with the Antichrist. I don't want to have nothing to do with that man. Amen. I want to be ready now. I want to be counted worthy to escape that. Praise God. And it's time to get 
Only you know that. Only you can answer that. Am I ready? Ask yourself that question. Am I ready? When you lay down to sleep at night, am I ready? Amen. Because, you know, the next sound could be the Lord calling you. You just laid your head on the pillow and you, whoo! You already got tomorrow planned? And the Lord comes. You didn't even say goodnight, Lord. Amen. Casting off. Casting off. It's pretty descriptive there. Casting it off, getting rid of it. It's not something you want on. It's not something you want to be classified as doing. Amen. Usually when you have drunkenness, you have revelings and rioting. People lose their sense of what's right and what's wrong. They do things that are improper. People do dumb things when they're drunk. They don't know what they're doing. And then mix that with some drugs yet, and you got more volatile mess than you've ever had before. Amen. Chambering, that's, you know what that is. Wantonness just means uh, just no modesty whatsoever. Shameless conduct. Lewd. And that's the way it is today. People aren't afraid to appear that way. That's not good. And then not only that, you have this lasciviousness, which is the, the absence of restraint, indecency, excess. Amen. Usually in that realm of sexuality, thoughts, affections, looks, words, songs, gestures, dances, dalliances. Amen. All those things, just time to throw them away. Time to get rid of them. Time to say, I, I don't have time. I, I don't want to be caught. But you, you know, you know what's happening when, that, when that's going on. You, you, you don't even know what time it is. That's the worst part. You don't even know where you are sometimes. We had a guy, you know, he, he came into work. And he don't remember where he parked his car last night. So we had to bring him to work. He said, I went to a bar room and I didn't know where I parked my car. I went home after a drunken night. This morning I made my way back to the house. I realized it's almost work time now and I can't find my car. I don't even know where I parked it. Well, I, we can get that way. We can come to church and think, well, he, he won't come, you know. I can taste that McDonald's right now. It says, put on the armor of light. Amen. Turn on the lights. Yeah, don't do anything that's shady. Just turn the lights up. Amen. The more light you turn on, the less they likely you are to get involved in something shady. Amen. Put on the armor of light. Amen. I don't want to be asleep in the night. Amen. We're children of the light. Ephesians 5, 8 says we're children of the light, and we ought to walk as children of the light. We ought to walk honestly because it's daytime. Amen. It is the day. And we can do that. We can walk honestly, decently, legitimately, becomingly. Please help us to do that. It's time to do that because you know what time it is? High time. Knowing the time, it's high time. So what? Awake. Man, we don't have time to go to bed. Not on the Lord right now. Right now, there's no option. We need to be ready to go. Amen. That doesn't mean we don't go to sleep tonight. I'm, I'm not saying that. But we can live sloppy. I mean, 
you know. We can live as though we don't really think he's coming, that we got time to fix it. And I'll, I'll get serious about this after a while. Right now, I'd like to enjoy what I'm doing. Well, you won't have long to let and he could come. And you won't have time to say I'm sorry about it. And he's trying to get us to say, look, I'm sorry, Lord. Let's get on top of this and go on. Amen. Put it behind you. It says here, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on. Amen. Let him shine through you. Would Jesus do and go and be where you are? Would you take him by the hand and take him where you're headed? And have him with you all night long? That would prevent a lot of things, wouldn't it? If you just took him by the hand and said, Lord, here we go. And he'll say, where are we going? The bar room. Oh, yeah, right. We're going to the, you're going to drag me in the bar room? Oh, that's right, you're with me, aren't you? Maybe I better not go in the bar room. If you think he's, if you don't think he's there, he is. It says, if you go into a harlot, you make him one with a harlot. You think he likes that? No. He don't like none of that. You take him down to the bar room and give him a juggle up. There, enjoy that, Lord. You're his child. He lives in you. Don't you know that? That's why we can't do some things. There's some things we probably would do if it was otherwise. But because he lives in me, I can't do a lot of things. Some things I, you know, you you would you would think of more clearly about before you did it. It said, "Put on the armor of light and walk honestly, like it's day." And we do it decent and honor, honorable and becomingly and legitimately. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and make no provision for the flesh. Meaning we don't give the flesh any open doors. Amen. You can take the flesh to the wrong place. Amen. You're having trouble with certain sins, you don't want to go right down to the, the local tavern or the local whatever. You know that you'd be tempting yourself. Amen. You don't make provision for your flesh. You don't get involved in, a, a, in, in activities that would tempt you needlessly. Amen. No, no provisions. It says, adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. Amen. Adorn. It means the, this gospel that we preach is the most beautiful thing in the world. You don't want to mess it up. Our conversation must be as becomes the gospel or becometh the gospel. Amen. Our conversation, our manner of life, that's the fit, amen, this glorious gospel that we have been given. If, you are, if you're a child of God and your sins are washed away and you're not your own and you're bought with a price, how can we live otherwise then? Amen. Adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. Amen. Becoming, amen, the gospel. But... He's about to come. Some people, uh, James said he's at the door. Amen. Other scriptures talk about that your moderation be known unto all men. For the Lord is at hand. Amen. He's, he, it's too close. Well, but you know what's happening? We can't quite... We're creatures of time, you know, and that 
we look and we, we can read that, and that's 2,000 years ago or more. You know, around there. We would say that. But we look at that and think, ah, it didn't come in 2,000 years. What was, why should I get so excited? That's the first impression you get. He had never come tonight. Boop. What if, what if that's the last word I talk to you about? And we'd be out of here. My goodness. That would be some, some, something. But that's the way it's going to happen. One day we're going to come in here. It could be while we're in here. Hopefully it will be. Thank God. I'd, I hope it is. Amen. I like to, I like to be with you all when we go. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be here. I want to have at least a foot in the door anyway, you know. But you know, I could live so sloppy that I miss it. I call in, you know. Ah, it's all right if I miss tonight, Brother Paris. I say, go ahead. If you got to do it, do it. You know, I, I know there's times you legitimate. I try to be nice. But friend, we're, we're, we're in serious. We're talking about something serious. <laughs> Amen. There's no better place to be than if, if we're sleeping at the switch. Where are we when we're not in church? What's so important about the other place? Huh? Could it be that much more important? I don't think so. Make no provisions for the flesh. Amen. We've got to put on some restraint. Amen. We've got to get rid of some excesses. We can't afford any indecencies. We can't be lacking chastity. We need to be modest, shameless. Not lewd. Amen. Certainly not caught where we don't belong in bed with somebody. Unless we're married. Revelings. Carousing. We call it today. Amen. He's soon to come. Our hope says he's about to come. It's here. It's nearer. It's upon us. Amen. I don't want to even find me sleeping, do you? What would happen if you were asleep? And you were you never got rid of those works of darkness, you never cast them off, you never got rid of them. He said he'll take you unaware. And he said you needed to be counted worthy to escape. Hmm? You ought to count yourself. He's offering you the ability to be ready when he comes. Amen. I don't want him coming and finding me sleeping. Doing the unfruitful works of darkness. He says some of those things that they do are not even meant. You don't want to put them in your mouth and form words. You don't want to even say them. That's how bad they are. And yet we we sometimes think we have forever to get all right. Amen. Darkness. Sometimes we think, you know, it hides it. But you know, his he can step into your darkness at any moment. He knows what you're doing. You may think you're hid, but you're not hid. He's there. Amen. To cast off these things means to cease doing them. Quit it. Desist. Hate it. Abhor it. Amen. 
No more. Nothing to do with them anymore. Walk out on it. Get enough brave pills and swallow them. No, I, don't know what, I don't know any pills that you can take and make it. I know one thing you can take, and that's go to the Lord in prayer and say, God, stop me. Amen. Stop me. I don't need to. I don't need to go any farther than this. Amen. I need to be ready. I need to be ready. Amen. We don't have time. We don't have time to just say, well, I'll I'll get another hour's sleep here. Or two. And I don't I don't put it off. I don't cast it off. He says cast it off. I mean, he, he meant it's serious business. Get it, get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's, it, it isn't going to help you. Put on the on, put on something. If you cast something off, he wants you to put something on. He said, put on the armor of light. Amen. Let people see your love, your joy. You know, Peter says it too, knowing about the, what time it might be. Uh, said the Lord's at hand and. He said, be sober. Be sober, 1 Peter 4, 7. Be sober, sound-minded. Amen. Self-restraint, governed, discreet, chest, modest, right-minded, calmness of mind. Amen. Reasonable, sensible, serious. That's to be sober. Amen. Think soberly, live soberly. He said, and watch unto prayer. Amen. Be alert, be vigilant, be awake, be ready. Ready to pray. Awake to righteousness. Free from every form of excess and passion and confusion. Amen. He said also, above everything else, have fervent, fervent charity among us. Amen. Stretched out, intense, strained, loved deeply. It covers a multitude of sins. Amen. And it says, uh, use hospitality one to another without grudging. Amen. Entertain, lodge, host. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Stop being, you know, regretful and showing your displeasure all the time. Amen. Be hospitable. Minister your gift. What has God called you to do? Are you doing it? You preparing for it? If you, if he's, he's he's giving you something to do, and and you're either in the preparation stage or you're doing it, and you need to awaken to it. Amen. That's the most important thing. You have a job to do. Amen. And that job, you know, we want to be as Paul, Paul said it. He would like us to serve without distraction. That means we give ourselves fully to what God's called us to do and, and say, hey, it's too late. We're too close to the Lord's coming to get too involved in anything else. I want to be doing what God's called me to do when he comes. Amen. There'll be people in Bible college. There'll be people just coming into church. There'll be people that are in the process of developing their ministry when Jesus comes. But they'll be doing it. They'll be doing it. Minister your gift. Amen. Knowing the time. What time is it? The male will look at the clock and say, well, where the parents? It's, uh... No, that's not the time I want. It's high time because our salvation, our salvation, our salvation, our salvation is nearer and when we first believe, we were one step away from eternity and being immortal. Can you imagine that? My goodness. You don't want you don't want to miss it. Amen. Sometimes we 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 live as though that day isn't coming. We think I'm saved. We can get this idea that we're, you know, that everything's done already. And it is if we're living for God. You know, he'll keep you until that day. He promised to do that if you'll 
But you know, you can just ignore him. 